account uh, as one of my best. Uh, and it was a pleasure to share this, this, this uh, paper with uh, uh, Gilles Pages. Uh, later, the, our relations were, well, warm, but uh, we used to meet only from time to time. And while, while thinking on the topic of, uh, for this uh, particular uh, conference, I uh, thought that it would be nice to, to recall again this, the techniques of uh, 1980s. And uh, I uh, uh, found the technique of discretizations uh, to be nice for presenting, uh, um, of course, in a more uh, contemporary problem. Uh, and in fact, this uh, topic, this technique of discretizations is uh, uh, naive, of course, not uh, the most efficient, but reliable uh, uh, basis for numerical schemes. Uh, and therefore, it fits perfectly the topic of the conference. So uh, now I can go to uh, to the uh, talk. Uh, first, I would like to stress that this is a, a work in progress. And uh, my co-author, uh, we work uh, for some time on such topics, is Marcus Riddle from King's Coll College London. Uh, instead of uh, posing the problem from the very beginning, I would like to, to present some this is not a toy example because this, uh, these are the computations as are not so obvious, but uh, just to uh, to give a taste uh, of, of what will uh, happen in the uh, later. I would like to start with a very simple model. We have a, a stochastic differential equations equation with respect to a semi martingale. It's only one dimensional case, the simplest possible case. Uh, of course, such uh, equations were studied in 70s, 80s uh, and 80s. Uh, uh, we, uh, so there is nothing new to be said here, but I would like to stress that there is some approach that has some potential. Uh, take a partition. So we are coming to discret discretizations. Take a partition uh, on, in fact, uh, a sequence of partitions. Uh, and uh, we said that uh, X and uh, we define a corresponding sequence of uh, discretizations of this uh, differential equation. Uh, first at zero, this is just the initial condition. Then we have a, a, a recurrent uh, scheme X and T1 is X zero plus, and of course uh, th this is the prior prior value value of of the time. Uh, the next is uh, the previous plus. Uh, increment. So, in fact, the general formula is that uh, in T and K we have uh, such a uh, sum, uh, which are you know, at least, uh, of course, you are familiar with. Uh, and uh, the point is that, uh, of course, we extend those uh, processes to the interval zero T uh, by right continuity. And uh, the, the point is that if G is bounded and continuous, and we of course consider uh, dense and dense, uh, more and more dense uh, uh, partitions, then Xn converge, the sequence converges uniformly in probability to a solution of this uh, equation. So of course, boundedness and continuity is a restriction. Uh, uh, continuity is not so much. Uh, in most cases, we have continuity. Of course, it is possible to build more general theory, but of course, boundedness is a restriction here. Uh, and but uh, uh, because uh, our solution is obtained on the same space as a uh, limit of uh, uh, discretizations, then uh, we can of course consider the procedures of. Uh, uh, extending uh, uh, the, the solutions, uh, uh, growing the solutions, say, uh, uh, and for that it is necessary to combine properties of G, for example, if we know that uh, uh, there is a linear growth uh, of this and uh, the, the, the uh, integrator is a 
square integral martingale so we can uh, uh, extend such a solution such approach was uh, uh, considered uh, in uh, early papers by Proter from 77 78 uh, but simple here i quoted to stress the fact that it is possible to construct quite general solutions we do not we do not touch the problem of uniqueness but it is possible to construct quite general solutions uh, starting with this simple uh, fact first fact uh, and i would like to uh, to well, show uh, how how does it work i mean how this fact uh, can be proved. Uh, in fact, if we uh, have a G bounded, then it is clear. And uh, here we have incre increments of, uh, of a, Marti a semi-martingale. Then, of course, this process with boundedness of G is uh, those processes are uh, semi-martingale satisfying so-called condition UT. Uh, and uh, this is due to, to the boundedness. And uh, then uh, the sequence xn, one can say this is so-called s tight. That means uh, that xn the suprema on each interval, finite interval, are uniformly tight. Uh, and the same is that the number of oscill oscillations is uh, uniformly tight, stochastically bounded for each uh, eta. Uh, so uh, this and this, those two facts are crucial for uh, derivation of the convergence uni, of the convergence in probability uniform in probability to a solution. Of course, uh, there can be some different uh, method, but uh, the, this can be obtained by analysis of computations in, in my paper from '96, uh, and I, I simple I like this computation because. Uh, especially of those arguments. Uh, it's quite technical, but uh, this, those uh, results give you for free some basic uh, uh, estimates. And uh, so this gives some, some taste of, of the general method. We will see, we will uh, tr attack our general problem exactly in the same way. So our aim is uh, uh, to find a solution to the equation in a very general form. Here, uh, uh, capital A is the generator of a strongly continuous semi-group on a separable Hilbert space, uh, capital uh, V. Then uh, L is a, uh, the noise is a cylindrical Levy process on some other, perhaps on some other separable Hilbert space U. Uh, the function f is uh, continuous. This is for the time being assumption. Uh, the function g is continuous, uh, but it takes values in the space of Hilbert Schmidt operators from u to v. Uh, so, of course, uh, clearly this uh, requires explanation. What does it mean? Uh, uh, cylindrical Levy process is not a process, so we will need some uh, notions to to be explained and finally we have a some we have some uh, uh, initial uh, condition and we in fact we will uh, look for uh, a mild solution uh, to such uh, integral equation uh, not this is a standard uh, in a sense uh, topic uh, uh, some people used to develop uh, the theory of stochastic differential equations in this way, stochastic partial differential equations, uh, or, or uh, some sometimes it is called evolution equations. This is mainly due to the uh, operator to, to the form uh, involving the, the op, uh, op generator of this uh, 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 semi-group, continuous semi-group. Uh, you can, there are two references, but of course there are more and newer. Uh, uh, why to consider a cylindrical Levy processes? It is known that we should provide some example later, but uh, it is known that uh, uh, those processes uh, 
can be isotropic, for example, uh, while if you consider uh, Levy processes uh, in the in Hilbert space, they, they, they are really depending on, on, on the choice of parameters and, and they are not isotropic. While uh, cylindrical form gives a good model for the noise. Uh, what is the main challenge here is that uh, we postulate that the noise uh, is uh, in general form. It's only a cylindrical Levy process. We do not uh, construct any process. We assume only this uh, naked uh, uh, object in a sense. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, not uh, uh, help, helpful uh, analytical tools in such a case, especially because uh, we do not have uh, semi-martingale decomposition. This is not a proper cylindrical Levy process, is not a usual process, so there is no uh, decomposition into the martingale part uh, uh, or, or nor uh, jump part, and this is the main challenge and, and main uh, difficulty to cope with such a problem without uh, evoking any particular form of this cylindrical levy process. So that's the challenge. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, have so some very abstract level of considerations. Uh, so one can ask why not integrate with respect to a cylindrical semi-martingale? In such notion uh, also uh, does exist. But uh, the answer is uh, rather uh, unexpected in a sense. Uh, the stochastic integral is not defined uh, so far. And uh, well, by considering some counterexamples, it is clear that even if we can define uh, such a a stochastic integral, uh, then it will be very, very narrow. It would eliminate uh, the, the whole generality of a cylindrical semi-martingale. Uh, uh, instead of uh, talking, uh, or let me, um, at this level of generality, let me introduce uh, some, uh, the, the notion of a uh, radonifications as a poor, but substitution for stochastic integration with respect to cylindrical semi-martingales. Um, of course, we should start with some, some example, and the example is well known. This is a cylindrical Brownian motion. Uh, we have a the starting point that we have a orthonormal basis, and we have a, a sequence of independent standard Wiener processes. Then for each Y, we can define a, uh, a process which uh, is a function of t, but uh, depends on y in this way. Because those uh, coefficients are summable, square uh, square summable, this is a real Wiener process, real Wiener process. So for each y, we have a, um, a real uh, stochastic process uh, and uh, uh, the, the dependence is clearly linear and continuous in a sense uh, on y. Uh, but uh, it is possible to show that it is uh, there is no uh, h-valued usual stochastic processes such that this function, which is linear in y, is simple a uh, function obtained by multiplication by scalar scalar product of y with x t. On this, uh, this is well known uh, well known fact, but this is typical to all uh, to all considerations related to cylindrical processes. On the other hand, and this is a good example, a very good example, because we can we can show everything. If we take a Hilbert-Schmidt operator, uh, then and we consider a somewhat restricted linear form, we see that here we take t uh, star the, the um, conjugation of, of of y, and then of course we have a, uh, by the by applying this formula. And uh, passing with t on the other side without start, we see that we obtain really a usual scalar product times some pro process. The, this time, because if we have a Hilbert-Schmidt operator, those vectors 
R square uh, in norm R square uh, summable again. So they define a usual process. We say that uh, T radonifies the cylindrical Brownian motion BY. We have a cylindrical process. When you take some uh, uh, Hilbert split operator, we obtain uh, a usual process, which we call uh, uh, rad uh, radonification of the cylindrical Brownian motion, or, or we say that T radonifies this Brownian motion. Uh, it was uh, the general definition of a, a cylindrical semi martingale. I will give it in, in the most useful form, but it is, uh, of course, this assumption of, of uh, Emery's topology here mentioned is can be weakened uh, considerable, but in general, uh, phi is a map from uh, some Hilbert space to the space of semi martingales on some stochastic basis, uh, and such that. Uh, uh, for this is a linear map and such that uh, uh, this is a continuous map when we equip the space of a zero with Emery's topology, a zero topology, standard topology on uh, semi martingales. So, we, cylindrical Brownian motion mentioned before, uh, a while ago is a, is a good example, a standard example uh, uh, of, of this uh, kind. Uh, type. What uh, was possible to do uh, in a series of papers, in fact, but uh, uh, as, uh, the, the final statement was in uh, 96 obtained by Badrikian and Badrikian and Istinel. They showed that if they take three Hilbert Schmidt operators, then uh, such three operators radonify. Uh, uh, general uh, cylindrical semi martingale uh, the idea was that uh, with uh, every uh, operator hilbert schmidt operator we get some more, more regularity uh, lawrence schwartz uh, proved uh, a corresponding three operators theorem in banach spaces assuming some some proper properties of course uh, uh, what uh, was possible to show, in fact, uh, in a paper, in joint paper with Kvapin, Paul Reino de Fit, and Jan Ryszynski, uh, that uh, uh, we don't need uh, three oper operators. We need uh, only one operator, one operator instead of three. So there is no three operators theorem. There is one operator theorem, by the way, as a byproduct, we obtain that uh, in Banach spaces. Uh, two operators are, are, are sufficient for radonification of a, a weak uh, uh, semi-martingale or cylindrical semi-martingale. Uh, so only one uh, is enough. <clears throat> so this, is, this looks very nice, but uh, the, this type of uh, notion uh, allows to in integrate uh, only deterministic functions with respect to such cylindrical semi martingale uh, So this is something like, like a definition of the pelli integral before war, where it was integration by part, and, and we could integrate uh, uh, functions, uh, deterministic functions, with respect to the Wiener process. Uh, in fact, uh, we are not able to define uh, uh, this uh, stochastic integral for a general cylindrical martingale. And as I said, there are some real uh, uh, problems. Uh, this will be seen in a moment, wh what is the main difficulty. This is not in, at the level of processes. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Marcus Riedle and myself, uh, we were able to define a stochastic integral of uh, Kaglat integrands with respect to a cylindrical Levy process. What is a cylindrical Levy process? The definition is natural. Uh, we have a, a sequence of cylindrical random variables, not synchronous, a family of cylindrical random variables on a Hilbert space U 
and such that if we uh, take a, a, a arbitrary finite uh, uh, set of vectors, then those these are cylindrical random variables. So after taking the value, evaluating of the cylindrical random variable at some vector, we get usual random variable. So here we have a vector in Rn, and this vector should be a Levy process in Rn. So the cylindrical Brownian notion is, of course, an example, but there are, of course, more uh, such examples. It's easy to construct uh, families of such examples. Uh, how to construct this uh, uh, stochastic integral with respect to this cylindrical Levy process? Uh, take uh, previously it was Kaglad, but uh, we we will take the left limits of the sequence of, of this uh, uh, process. Suppose we have a Kaglad adapted process with values in L2. L2 are not sur surprising. We know that uh, Hilbert sp space operators radonify uh, cylindrical random variables. So that's the, the, the basic thing to if we want to have a, a stochastic integral to be a process, we have to use Hilbert space, uh, Hilbert Schmidt operators as uh, integrants. Integrants. Uh, then it is possible to show that there exists a, this final V uh, valued semi Martingale, which we will denote uh, in a usual way as the stochastic integral which on each finite interval is the uniform in probability limit of discretizations. Uh, I don't use special, those discretizations are clear in form here. We have increment of, this, of those uh, cylindrical random variables taken at uh, uh, random variables with values in U tab. Yes, so, so it's clear that uh, here we see the main difficulty in definition of such stochastic integral. Uh, this is uh, that here we have a, a cylindrical random variable which is evaluated, which gives usual uh, real random variable evaluated at some uh, vector, uh, not random variable. So this is a random variable. This is the main difficulty in uh, definition of, of such simple uh, with some some such simple stochastic integral uh, in case where we have a general semi martingale and not cylindrical semi martingale in our case we have a that this random variable is in a sense of course independent of of this uh, increment yeah so so this is something like evaluation by conditioning and so on or whatever we call it by approximation, this can be defined. Uh, uh, by approximation with simple function, this can be defined, and so on. Nevertheless, this is the main point, main difficulty in definition. Uh, this uh, random variable is independent, therefore, it this uh, increment uh, does exist. I mean, this, this stochastic uh, integral for elementary. Uh, uh, stochastic processes can be can be defined this way and then of course it's a matter of going to the limit uh, to show that this sequence converges uh, to we can write by analogy to run radonification that on y we have uh, here uh, such integral and so this is somewhat different form that we take here evaluation on y this is uh, this in a sense, Cadillac process, and we integrate with it with, a, with respect to the earth. So there exists a cylindrical Levy uh, process. Uh, okay, so there is integral, of course, for of, of uh, summons which are uh, Cadillac or Kaglat in this case, but in fact, there is a, a hope. Uh, well, it should be so that there is a uh, there is a possible extension of this integral to usual setting of locally bounded uh, predictable processes, but uh, this this should be more involved. That this uh, uh, limit uh, 
with methods we used in the paper mentioned paper from the analysis of probabilities. Uh, well, uh, somewhat are those. Uh, so so uh, perhaps with some ingenious uh, methods, short methods this, that could be simplified, but we don't know. We can construct a, a stochastic integral of uh, Cadillac Hilbert Schmidt valued uh, uh, processes with respect to uh, cylindrical Levy process. Uh, one more question is uh, uh, to be explained. Uh, in the mild formulation of our problem, we have here a semi-group, but the form is clear. This is a stochastic convolution. And of course, we, we know very well that in general, stochastic convolution can behave very, very badly. Therefore, we uh, apply in our consideration so-called uh, dilation theorem due to Sekefold Vinoj. And this theorem, theorem reads, uh, dilation theorem reads that uh, if we have a, and this is the exception, contraction semi-group, this is not a, in most applications, this is not a real uh, problem. We can always, we can often change the uh, semi-group, uh, uh, the most important semi-groups of interest to a contraction semi-group. But if we start with a contraction semi-group, then there exists embedding into a bigger, larger uh, Hilbert space and a strongly continuous group of unitary operators on this uh, extension such that we obtain our uh, semi-group, elements of our semi-groups as a projection of this uh, uh, group operating at higher level. Uh, here P is the orthogonal projection from the uh, upper space to, 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 to the original space V. So this simplifies, of course, this uh, you know, brings some, bring some uh, problems. Technically, we can deal with those problems. And uh, finally, the title was the, uh, the title of the talk was the discretization uh, in existence uh, for evolution equations. So let us introduce the, our scheme, discretization scheme. So we, we start with a, a sequence of finite partitions. Uh, we, of course, uh, assume that, uh, like in Riemann integration, that the me mesh goes to, to, to the zero, the diameter of those partitions goes to zero. And we can consider a sequence of discretizations defined in the following way. This is quite natural. This is the right continuous. That, so that means it is enough to define the, the discretization uh, at uh, T and K. It's like uh, in the previous case, but of course we should remember we deal with a uh, trip to, to, to the larger space, and then we return to the original space. This is the, the, the dilation theorem simple, resolves uh, the semi-group into two parts. Here we have a, a element of a group, and here we have a element of the group, which is the, the transposition of, of, the, of the previous, uh, transpose of the previous. So we have a, uh, uh, we can, by linearity, uh, take uh, out this uh, group, this element of this uh, group, this uh, ortho orthogonal uh, unitary operator out of the sum. And therefore we get something that we are familiar with. Namely, we work with the uh, usual uh, discretization scheme. Uh, and the same happens with the second. Here, of course, this part has this particular sense uh, I, I mentioned, uh, I discussed below. What is uh, he also important here that we just to avoid uh, too much complicated here, we have, a, uh, in fact, embedding of F into the uh, capital V hat uh, space. That means here should be written I of uh, this embedding, continuous embedding into the bigger space. And the same with G 
for that it is not unnecessary because we have G star and uh, also, uh, <clears throat> no, uh, no, that's all. This is mean that this is the, in a sense, abbreviation uh, just to avoid complications in this. So this is a very clear, very clear scheme uh, that can be uh, constructed. And now the point is, uh, can we say something about the convergence of this uh, uh, the sequence of discretizations of our general uh, equation. And uh, here goes uh, our main result. Suppose that uh, uh, A is the generator of a strongly continuous semi-group of contractions. Contraction. This is our assumption in order to be able to apply the uh, dilation theorem. As I said, uh, in most cases, this is not a real uh, exception, a uh, real problem. We assume that L is a cylindrical Levy process on some Hilbert space U. We take, uh, and here uh, are the most restrictive assumptions. We have a continuous mapping that the set of value of its values is a compact, is compact or, or is conditionally compact. That means this function takes values only in a compact set. Of course, this is restrictive assumption and I will discuss it in a moment. Uh, G is a continuous uh, and takes values in a compact set. Uh, again in compact set, but this time in a compact set of Hilbert-Schmidt operators. <clears throat> and of course, X zero is the initial condition. Then the sequence of disc discretizations described before converges uniformly in probability on every interval uh, to some process X and the limit uh, is a mild solution, so it satisfies uh, exactly our assumption. So after some, uh, we in fact solve the promised uh, problem. We are able to solve this, this equation with quite general assumptions, but of course also with some technical restrictions. And before I say a really few words about the, the idea of the proof, I will make those comments. So. Well, I do not claim this is a very interesting result in the sense that uh, um, the assumptions uh, on compact images are very uh, restrictive. Uh, yeah, so, so, but as exactly as in the one dimensional case, this can be a starting point for, point for, exp uh, for extensions of the solutions. Uh, so, so this is a starting point, and of course, then if we tr if we are able to provide tools, efficient tools of controlling how the solutions leave compact sets, then, in fact, uh, then of course provide some approximation of the general continuous functions f and g, and we know that uh, by some combination of uh, of the, of the way of approximation of, of arbitrary continuous functions uh, function and inter, some integrability properties of the, of the noise, we could expect uh, existence of some uh, solutions, uh, mild solutions at more general level. So we did this first step. We of course have some results uh, in this direction, that means to prove that uh, uh, we have some efficient tools of, of controlling uh, those uh, solutions uh, and so on, but uh, this is not definitely not finished yet. And uh, we need some time probably. Uh, unfortunately, the time of pandemic uh, does not provide enough time in a sense to, 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 to research. So, so the, this progress is, uh, in a, uh, is uh, unfortunately lo uh, slow, but uh, there are vacations uh, uh, and we hope 
to return to the usual to the to the balance in a sense so so there is a hope to get some uh, efficient tools of 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 to provide conditions which are sufficient for existence of solutions at the general level more general than than the previous one on the other hand uh, if we realize that we need compactness, those, those compact, compact images conditions uh, at this very basic level, then uh, uh, we see that uh, if we do not have uh, uh, some, if we apply some standard uh, assumptions like uh, Lidar grows uh, assumptions and so on. So we can get some solutions and by, by methods of functional analysis, but uh, it is possible to show unexpectedly, somewhat unexpectedly, that they are uh, with irregular trajectories. For example, Marcus, there are some strange uh, results of this type, but also quite natural assumptions for a stable levy uh, process uh, levy cylindrical levy processes uh, uh, obtained by Marcus Riedel uh, and published recently in in uh, communications electronic communications in probability. So it happens quite often that the solutions have irregular trajectories, non cadillac trajectories. Uh, and uh, uh, when we see at those starting points, it is not surprising to have a cadillac. Uh, assumption, we need strong assumptions, stronger assumptions than usually than one would expect from the usual uh, functional analysis tools. Uh, sometimes there is there is also approach uh, to, to this uh, topic in the form that uh, given a solution with irregular trajectories, it is often possible that we jump uh, to to larger a larger space and then in this larger space the the solution solution becomes uh, regular uh, i do not like uh, especially those results because uh, when we work with some spa hilbert space we interpret elements when we jump jump to the bigger one uh, it is uh, seldom that we have a um, we can interpret the, the, the bigger space uh, in, in proper way. And uh, one in, uh, remark on the proof. The main ingredient is that we consider also a discretization scheme constructed on the basis on Xn, see that on Xn, but without project projecting on the space. So. If we have such a processes, then uh, the original process is obtained from this process by projecting. It's not one map, it's a family of maps, but all of them are, are uh, of norm one, uh, bounded, uh, uniformly bounded, uh, from uh, that Xn is obtained from those processes by projecting down to the space P. Uh, and it is possible why we consider due to assumptions on F and the G, this co those compact uh, values uh, assumptions, we can prove that uh, those processes YN satisfy the compact containment conditions. So with high probability, they live in some compact subset of Hilbert space and they have a uniformly tight at oscillations for every eta. This is a consequence of one dimensional case. So this is possible under the compact containment condition. It is possible to reduce situation to one dimensional case and eliminate uh, explosions of oscillations. And since uh, Xn's are uh, projections of, of uh, Yn's, they have the same properties, continuous projections, they have the same properties and this, this opens, uh, provides basic tools for estimating the, and proving the uh, fact that the uh, processes Xn converge to the solution, my solution uh, in the limit. So that's all what I have uh, to say. Thank you very much.